you've named the same halves and Kirtley at fullback. Um, clearly, attack was a bit of a, a challenge against England. Um, is this a case of you beefing up the forwards to give the guys some go forward and something to work off? Um, oh, look, really, last week was a lot to do with accuracy, uh, execution. Um, you know, look, as, as we showed them in a review, we uh, we had opportunities to hurt them, uh, but just weren't accurate enough. And so, uh, and that was across the board. It wasn't like it was a, a couple of individuals who struggled. So, uh, so that needs to be better. We've we've, we've prepared pretty well again. Uh, just got off the field from our major run of the week, and uh, boys are pretty sharp. So the expectation is that we uh, execute better. In other cases, um, you've. You know, you you punish underperformance with um, giving other guys an opportunity, but you've kept the faith with. Well, Whitey was great, but you kept the faith with Kirtley and and James. Um, why is that in particular? Oh, we just think they're the right guys for the job. Um, yeah, so yeah. Dave, opting for Larkar on the bench, um, you were saying you wanted, you felt the need to have a specialist centre. Just wondering what you, why this sort of reasoning was. Was it something that Wales possessed? Was it something within your squad that you felt you needed to sort of cover? Um, well, we've had, um, I mean, these boys have played a lot of footy on this tour. They've played every game. They've played just about every minute of every game. Um, yeah, and while we had uh, Izzy on the bench and he's played a lot of 13 at club level, uh, there's a fair bit to pick up in this group, and he's primarily trained with us on the wing. So, um, so yeah, Lalakai gives us genuine 12 earning cover, and to be honest, he's trained a house down. Um, so, you know, he deserves an opportunity. I was going to say, what does he offer you that you might not get out of an Isaiah Parisi coming, especially filling in that 12 slot potentially? He gives us versatility. Uh, he can genuinely cover 12 and 13. Uh, excellent distributor, uh, really good feet, um, making really big shifts around the physical side of his game, the clean tackle. Um, yeah, it's like he's developed a really good kicking game, a very good communicator. And so, um, yeah, like he's been a standout at training and uh, we're excited that he's going to get an opportunity this week. You touched on wanting to say a lot of it, a lot out of these European guys you brought in, you've Brought in players in Japan and Europe, we've seen sort of mixed success. I mean, Sami Karevi's nominated for Player of the Year after his performances. Having, having had those guys in camp and seen the influence they can have, is that changing your view of where you think the future of this so-called Ghetto Lord lies? Yeah, look, um, the, the future of the Ghetto Lord really depends on um, a review that we'll have post-tour. Uh, we'll obviously sit down with the board and uh, get a clarity on, on the value of it and, and what it looks like going forward. Obviously, COVID has allowed us to um, sort of operate outside the, the boundaries. And, and um, you know, we're certainly, some of the guys that we've been, we've brought in, we're, we're trying to get home as well. And I think having them in the environment and them seeing and experiencing it has uh, been good for them. And, and hopefully uh, we can get them back to Super Rugby. Having had those guys in camp, is that the sort of notion you're getting out from is that they're more likely to come home now, having known they're like on the radar for Wallaby selection? Well, there are negotiations that need to happen. Uh, obviously, there's uh, you know there's a fair bit of money those players are on over here, uh, but uh, there's certainly two or three guys who are generally talking about the opportunity to come back home. Anyone else? So, just just one more for me, well, Matt. Um, and just a word on Slips, named as captain, and there was a very popular pick within the players. But have you noticed him step up to that extra leadership throughout throughout the training in that final session you just done? Yeah, he talks a lot at training anyway. Um, he's 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 really sharp, Slips. So, uh, what he says is on the money. Uh, he speaks from the heart. Uh, hugely respected. Um, you know, and and we've got a good group of leaders now, and so everyone chips in. He's going to have his head buried in, in some of the dark stuff in the weekend, and and that's where uh, Whitey and Rabs will um, will drive things. So um, yeah, like a, like he's spoken really well to the group, and I think as I've mentioned, you know, we're pretty good at just focusing on who we got rather than who we haven't. 
and so um, we got confidence in the guys coming in and and uh, yeah for them to do the job. David, hey, been a, um, sorry, Dave, it's been a long year for you. Could you reflect on maybe one thing that you're most proud of of your input this season, and maybe one thing that you, you know might have gone better, maybe a regret? Oh, probably not now, Tony. Maybe after next week, okay? uh, when we look back on the season, um, a good time to reflect on the whole, the whole season. I guess the focus at the moment is Wales. Thank you. Can I ask one more, just about the uh, Rassi decision that was uh, came down early this morning, <laughs> um, and the comments from Nick Berry that that were in that report. Um, what are your thoughts on that that situation for a start, and also? You know, the situation Nick's found himself in. Uh, I haven't read the article, um, but, but all, all I'll say is, um, you know, at the time, uh, it was hugely disappointing. Oh, I think Nick's a fantastic referee, a good man, and so disappointing with, with how he was treated. Um, so as as to any sentencing or, or what's come, I, I haven't read the article, but... Um, you know, I, I felt uh, Nick deserves better. Needs to be treated better than that, and and uh, you know, may, maybe there's more to come yet. Thank you. And just on Wales, what you are expecting, and what you've, if you've seen that team that's just come out, what your thoughts are around them? Yes, yeah, a strong side. Uh, it's, it's pretty much what we expected. Um, Wayne right back gives them, um, you know, uh, an excellent uh, ball carrying go forward. Um, Loose forward, so um, you know, I've got genuine on ball presence uh, and uh, a pretty strong back line, excellent uh, back three. Um, so, yeah, look, it's a good side. And, um, but you know, we, we've got a good team on the track, we're, we're excited. Yeah, our last crack over here in, in the UK and, and keen to give it everything. Thank you, Dave. Dave, can I just ask a, a little bit about your, your, um, uh, coaching rivalry with Wayne. I mean, you 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 you've coached against each other in Britain. Um, is it good going? You know, pitting your wits against him, uh, and you get a sense around this this match that it's um, a bit of desperation on both sides. You're both desperate to win it, particularly the Welsh. Yeah, and particularly the Australians. Um, yeah, look, I, look, I know I know Wayne well. Uh, obviously, coaching against each other in New Zealand and in the UK. Uh, oh, he's a good man, and um, yeah, like I understand, they've, um, they've had a couple of losses. They uh, they found their way past Fiji in the weekend, and um, but yeah, look, we're, we're pretty desperate as well. We've uh, you know we haven't performed as well as we needed to in, in the previous two tests, and uh, keen to make up for it. Dave, it's been a really long year, an extraordinary year, extraordinary circumstances. You guys have been on the road, away from families for a long time. How is everyone feeling? Yeah, it looks surprisingly good. Um, it's interesting. I, you know, I talk to guys like Hoops and Slips, and uh, it's it's a really tight group. They they spend a lot of time together. We, you know, we've been in a in a sort of a bubble while we've been away. It was pretty strict in Japan. Uh, while we can get out of the hotel, we've got to wear masks. You can't sort of go into a cafe or, uh, you know, stop anywhere. Um, it's, everything's takeaway. Um, so the boys have spent a lot of time together. They play a lot of cards. And so the, the mood within the group's excellent. Um, yeah, I know I, I mentioned to the guys when we played our last test against the Argentinians, you know, we'd been, some of the guys hadn't been home for 110 days, but it, it Actually, didn't feel like that. It felt felt like we had a lot more in us. You know, there wasn't uh, a fatigue factor setting in, or, or guys looking forward to Christmas or looking forward to Super Rugby. So, uh, there's still plenty of energy in the group, and you know, we're all, like I say, we're all keen to rip in and finish on a strong note. Hey, Dave, um, how's Filippo? You know, getting a chance to play after so long out with the uh, um, after he, after he broke his arm. Yeah, hopefully he goes longer than sixty seconds this time. Um, <laughs> yeah, like he, he, he's good. He's here's a real point of difference. Uh, powerful. Um, yeah, like he's he's trained really well. We've certainly considered him each week, and 
Uh, although we think this is a good mix for him. So, yeah, he's like he's ready to go. He's, he's very excited. Can I just ask about Wales, please, Dave? Um, under Wayne Pivak, how you've seen them change? Perhaps there seem to be some growing pains, certainly in this autumn and the last autumn, and a good six nations in between. How have you assessed them? Oh, but Jim, definitely playing more footy. Um, yeah, I think under Gats, uh, it was very similar to South Africans, happy to play without the ball, um, go a couple of phases if you haven't got what you want, give it back to the opposition and defend well. Uh, whereas uh, Wales have tended to play a lot more footy. Uh, still kicking quite a lot, um, but uh, probably more of a balance to the game. So certainly Stephen Jones, who was with um, Wayne at Scarlet's, uh, you can see his imprint and uh, obviously I've worked with John Humphreys and and you know he, he wants to play uh, an open brand of footy too. So um, yeah, you certainly see the, uh, they're making their stamp on the, on the game. Dave, this is the million dollar question, um, but you mentioned how good the preparation week was before England and that, you know, obviously things didn't translate onto the field. Um, in your review, were you able to nail maybe uh, what happened that meant off-field didn't translate to Twickenham uh, to, to be able to correct it for this weekend? Yeah, that was a combination of things. Um, you know, we uh, you know we talked a lot around uh, the quality of the communication. Uh, it's very loud out in the park. You imagine 80 or 1,000 people um, and, and just making sure we're really clear on, on how we're communicating and what we need. Um, yeah, some of it, some of it was just uh, basic skill set. Um, we, we we did a really good job defending and turning them over, and we had opportunities to sting them off there. I mean, Hunter made one break uh, from a turnover, but we had three or four where the last pass sticks, and you know, we can go along, uh, you know, a distance. So, um, so you know, we, we just need to be a lot more clinical. Um, you yeah, know, when we get opportunities, and you don't you don't get that many. So, um, yeah, look, we know we wanted to kick against England because we thought that was important. They're going to kick a lot to us. Um, but, you know, it's the, it's the quality of a kick and the ability to apply pressure through that kicking game. So, um, yeah, look, there are lots of areas, but ultimately discipline hurt us. You know, penalised 22 times, a couple of free kicks. I think 18 penalties with a couple of advantages. And, you know, it's difficult to win test matches if you're, if you're going to do that and then give up obviously possession and, and then territory. So, you know, we we're way down on those numbers and, you know, we certainly felt that with 20 to go, we're still in the game, but gee, we'd barely played any any footy and managed to hang in there. So there's plenty of character and plenty of effort, but um, a lack of discipline and a lack of accuracy. Got a couple of guys there now who don't have brilliant records on the on-field discipline, you know, for so much, but a guy like Tolu Latu, yellow cards kind of pepper his test history. Have you had a chat with him about that? How do you handle that? Oh, look, of course, we've had uh, conversations around discipline. Um, I mean, I think, you know, there's obviously lots of talk about guys we've brought back in over the past 12 months, I guess, you know, whether it was James O'Connor or Kirtley Beale or um, Quay Cooper, now now Tolu, um, who have had, um, I guess, checker careers historically, but, you know, we're judging them on on what, what they're doing and what they're saying and what they're delivering on uh, now. And uh, so we've been really wrapped with Kirtley. Obviously, we're very, very happy with... Uh, when Quaid and Summer and those guys came in, um, you know, so likewise with Tolu, he's, um, they all understand, uh, you know, the opportunity they're getting and uh, keen to deliver on that. 